Right before we jump into this video, I want to let you know if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can do so. Just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com. And I'm here to tell you why we've upgraded to Sennheiser G3s from the Sony UWP version 1s that I've been using for almost five years. Now, I want to also let you know there is a newer Sony model available. And why we didn't go with that? Well, we're going to talk about that as we get into the comparisons. So this is how it's going to work. I am going to talk into this camera whenever you're hearing the Sennheiser microphones. I'm going to talk into this camera whenever you're hearing the Sony ones and in the center, we're going to be using the Sennheiser mics as the overall microphone, but also you may hear the room mic cut in every so often just so that you can hear what is going on in the room. Because it's going to sound like we're in a big auditorium or a bathroom, whatever you want it to sound like, because there's a lot of echo. But remember, microphones are extremely important. So we have everything set as equally as possible between the two cameras. We're using three D610s here. We have the Sennheiser microphone set to three. Now that's the manual audio levels. On this camera, we have the Sony audio levels set to six, which means that the Sennheisers are 50% more sensitive. Now you also have to set the pack levels. Right here on the Sennheiser one, I have it set to negative 24, whereas the Sony is set to negative nine. That is about equal. They both have a different way of handling the audio levels. But let me explain. Because I project a lot, we have the Sennheiser set to negative 24. Now, if you were somebody who's talking softly or quieter, you're going to have that set to something more like negative 10 or negative 20, because as you lower that number, that's actually going to boost the, uh, the levels just a little bit as you get quieter because it has to it has to expand it slightly. So really that's the, the the basic explanation there. It's different on the Sony side, but in essence it acts exactly the same. Uh, one other thing is when you're setting your manual levels inside the camera, you want to make sure that you're around the negative 6 to negative 12 dB. That's about 75% on that level raising up. You're going to you just don't want to peak. You don't want to get into that red area and it's pretty much the same on the Sony uh, on any type of camera side whether it's the Canon, the Sony, uh, any any camera you're going to see those levels going up and down and it's the same negative 6 to negative 12 dB. So now I'm going to go through and compare the Sennheisers to the Sony that we have here as well as the new Sony that is out on the market because they don't sell this version of the Sony any longer because I purchased them about four years ago and they're up to a new model. But this is more of a why we upgraded to the Sennheisers over picking the newest Sony's to go out and get those. So what we have here is the price range. Now the Sennheisers, you're looking at 630 bucks and the new Sony's are about 600 bucks. They're, it's pretty equal. It's pretty much across the board the same thing. Uh, the reasons we went with the Sennheisers because it seems to be the industry standard. It seems to be what a lot of people use for their audio, especially on sets and movie sets. Now, we have a guy named Matt Martin who does all the recording for the Fronos Photo video guides, whichever ones we create. He does real deal feature length films, the audio for them. Some of the packs that he has are $3,000, but when I asked him what does he recommend that we use on the consumer end, he said the best one that you should get is the Sennheiser. That was flat out his recommendation. And there are reasons why, as we go down the list here, the better preamp. Now, what that means is when you're going into the camera, you can bring that level down lower. In this case, it was 50% lower than the Sony. That means you're gonna get a cleaner audio track, just the lower level so it doesn't have to boost it up higher. So let's go over why I ended up with the Sennheisers and not the newer Sonys that are out. Now, part of this is just to tell you what I like about the new Sennheisers first, what I don't like so much about the older Sonys that I've been using. Now, let me tell you that I've been using the Sonys for almost four years, and they've been great. I don't really have complaints about them because when I first started, I didn't really know how to set that. And we're going to run a little clip right now so that you can hear the audio, what it sounded like from my backyard when I first got this. So let's give that a listen right now. But the main feature that this adds is video and autofocus video at that. So when you go into the live view mode, you now have the ability to do 1080 video at 24 frames a second. You're going to want to use faster SD card. So yeah, that's a couple years ago in my backyard. You could hear the hissing in the background. That's because I set my camera audio to auto levels. 
So what happens is everything's expanding and contracting. When I get loud, it, it compresses it. When I get quieter, it expands it. And that's where you're getting that hissing noise. Also, the Sony packs have in there built-in compression. It's a digital compression that's happening where the Sennheisers don't have that. So we're trying, or we're, we think we get a much cleaner signal from the Sennheisers than from the Sony. Now, I also want to point out that you're probably not going to hear much of a difference between the two of them. They're really both very good, including the new Sony one is much more comparable to this Sennheiser one, but we weren't going to buy that one because we like what this Sennheiser has to offer. But keep that in mind, that they are very similar. They're similar in price. One, 600 bucks for the new Sony and $630 for the new Sennheisers, which have been out for I close to four years on their own. So moving down the list, there's some things that I didn't like about the Sonys that I have started to like about the Sennheisers. Something as simple as the clip. Now the clip that comes with the Sonys, I kept losing them. They kept popping off because they're just, I ended up super gluing them so that they didn't fall off after an interview, but that also makes it more difficult if I want to tape it underneath my shirt. And yes, we're wearing it on the outside of the shirt. We don't normally do this. Another thing is it has a bigger windscreen that does not stay on unless you super glue it. So we were losing those left and right, and it was like 18 bucks for six of them or maybe five of them if I went to buy more. So I was constantly losing those. Now on the Sennheiser side, they have a kind of a metally mesh uh, windscreen screen that just stays on. You can pop it off, you can keep it on, but it's not going anywhere. It just seems to be you know, well thought out, better built, and it just feels much better with that. Now also, the Sennheiser's cord is much longer. I don't know the pros and cons to that, other than it's more difficult for me to hide it behind my back, whereas the Sony, on the other hand, just seems to have a good enough cord. Now where that could come in handy is if you're a big, big boy, big girl, or just really tall, or whatever, you may need that extra reach to run it up a dress, because I know that we, sometimes you may put the pack on the back, and then you have to run it up the dress and around the front. You just need some extra slack from time to time. So checking my notes here, uh, the the Sennheiser and the Sony transmitters are basically the same size, but the receivers on the camera are smaller on the Sennheiser side than on the Sony. So that's definitely something that comes in handy. The batteries, let's talk about the batteries. They both take two double A's. They're gonna last you six to eight hours depending on what type of batteries you put in there. You can get rechargeables for both of them. They both sell units that you can get for that. The Sony has a door on the side that pops out. So that's one extra thing that you may need to have. I don't think you ever need to switch batteries quickly, so you probably don't need an extra door, but it's just one extra thing that you have to pop in and out, and if the, the, the latches break on that, well, you're SOL. On the Sennheiser side, you can flip the front panel open, and then you have the batteries right there, and you just close the front panel. Think, uh, speaking of the front panel, you also have the on and off switch inside the Sennheiser, where on the Sony, you have it on the outside. Now, I actually liked it on the outside, because in between takes, I would cut my microphone just so that I wasn't wasting battery power so that we can save it. In this case, I have to go ahead and open the flap, make sure I'm hitting the right, the proper on off switch, hold it down, and then it turns off. So that these are minor things. That's what you just, there's minor things. That's why I'm pointing them out. Also, while we're on that, the screen on the Sennheiser is much nicer. There's more information there. It has a nice backlight there. It has three bars instead of two bars for battery, which is what the Sony has. Now, I must tell you, the newer Sonys have a much better screen. It seems like they reverse engineered the Sennheisers to basically copy the success that they've had with this one in the newer Sony model. There's also something that's awesome in the Sennheiser and that's the infrared sync because with the Sony's to change a channel you have to sit there and change it here on the pack and there on the receiver manually on the Sennheisers you just put it into the 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 seek mode where it's gonna find the best frequencies over 1680 check my notes 1,680 frequency channels that it's going to search to find the best one. Once it finds it, you hold it over the transmitter, the transmitter and the receiver together, they send a signal, and boom, you're paired together. So talking more about the frequencies, Sennheisers have the easy setup button, which search through those 1,680 channels or uh, frequencies, which are just much easier to find, especially if you run it, we're in a city, and we have to find the best frequency so that we don't have any interference. I've had interference with the Sony packs down at the art museum on 
anybody who doesn't know the art museum, it's where Rocky ran up the steps. We can probably find you some B-roll to throw up there of, Rock, of somebody running up the steps. But uh, yeah, I've had that issue and it was just harder to go ahead and switch the frequencies. That's probably why Sony went ahead and updated their newer one to kind of do something similar than what the Sennheiser also does. So also with the frequencies, you have to think about how far away from the camera can you get? Well, when you're in the city with all of those frequencies flying around, it's probably gonna be not as far as if you're in the middle of a open plain, an open field with nothing in the way and no radio signals bouncing around. But they say you can get 100 meters, which is 300 and some feet, and also it's about 110 yards. So think of a football field plus the end zone or one end zone, and you can have your frequency range right there. So I think that's pretty much covering everything I wanted to talk about. Oh, one other thing is that Sony has something that the Sennheisers don't have. If your camera doesn't have a microphone, sorry, not a microphone, a headphone input so that you can monitor it, the Sonys have that in the top. So you could put a, micro, a, a headphone in there to monitor the audio. Now that's gonna happen in some of your lower end DSLRs where you don't have a microphone, sorry, a headphone jack so that you can monitor that audio. So one last thing before we move on to some tests is that the Sennheisers have a mute switch, meaning if I go take a pee in the bathroom and I don't want people to hear it, generally I want them to hear it, I leave it on, but then you can hit the mute and what's happening on the Sony side is I used to just turn the pack off, but when I turned the pack off, it would put all this white noise into Steven's ears who's, or whoever's monitoring the pack and in this way you just hit mute on this one and you're good to go. So now I wanna run through some different tests and we're gonna move into that right now. So now we wanted to set up a separate test where we got out of the camera's audio and got into something like an external recorder. In this case, we have the Zoom H6. Now we're using the XLR adapters from the receivers to go into the Zoom, and I'm still speaking through the transmitters, and you can see how it all works right here. Now we have the Sony set to level six, and we have the Sennheiser set to four, and that's giving us an equal volume or an equal sound on both of them. Now, the preamp in something like an external recorder like this is much cleaner. You wanna use this when you're doing something like an interview. You have multiple sources of audio that you need to record into one place. That's where it's gonna come in handy. And having the cleaner audio signal, it's just much nicer to start with a cleaner audio signal than what you have inside the camera so you can hear what both of them sound like and this is just a test using a external recorder like the Zoom H6. So now we're outside and we're lucky that it's not 12 degrees like it was yesterday. It's about 42, but we're here to do the real world sounding test because we're outside. We have I-95 over there. We have street sounds. We have leaves flying around. We have the wind blowing. When I do the wind tunnel test normally, I go like this. <sighs> But this time we actually have real wind happening. So it's, it's a good way to get an idea of what it would sound like in the real world. So we have everything leveled out exactly the same so that you can get the Sony sound and you can get the Sennheiser sound. But one other thing we wanna test out is the distance. How far away can we get? Which one's gonna stay on longer to actually work better? So I'm gonna turn and do that now. Okay guys, so I'm at the end of the block. I went a very long distance. It seems like more than a football field. If not two football fields, I don't know. But this is where it's kind of starting to break up or actually a little further across the street, it was breaking up. But this, this is pretty good. That's pretty good for both of them. So now I'm just gonna walk back and you're gonna see how far it really is. So we did sort of a little wind tunnel -y type test and I moved to the other side of the building because this is where the wind is actually blowing. We're only using the windscreens in the camera, uh, sorry, in on the microphones that are built in so you can see it. It is kind of windy. Here we go. Just a little bit of wind. Oh yeah, feel it blowing me. That wind is amazing right now. So good. That chilly, freezing nose wind because my nose must be red. But that's just a little test out here in the wind, real world. So we're now back inside and we had a chance to analyze the audio from the Sennheiser mics as well as the Sony mics to give you our final opinion. And when I say our, I mean me, but also Steven is the one who analyzed the audio because that is what he does. So 
Again, it's pretty subtle. You may not be able to tell the differences between both microphones when you're just listening. I mean, really, we had a hard time telling the differences. Now, there are subtle things that Steven was able to pick out that we'll talk about in a second, but I wanna go back to where we were outside. When we say which one went further, the Sony actually got us further. It kept sending signals when I was further away than the Sennheiser. But what happened is the further away we got, the worse the audio quality became. So the Sony wins on the fact that you can go further away, but if it's not clean, usable audio, it doesn't really matter. Also, you wanna take into account that we were walking straight or I was walking straight down the street. If I went behind a building or something like that, I think they both would have fared not as well. So right there, the Sony did better there, but the Sennheiser didn't do bad at all for what it was doing there. And another sample is when I was at the Flyers game shooting the review of the Canon 7D Mark II, Steven was really far away from me when I was standing on the bench and we used the Sony wireless when we were there and this is what it sounded like. Oh yeah, warm-ups, right? Pretty cool being down here on the bench to shoot the 7D Mark II. Trying to get wide angle of Mason right over here. So the goalies come over to the bench. You can get these wide shots that look pretty cool. You'll see it from the GoPro angle. Giroud, right there. So that is pretty cool how far away I was from Steven. He was using a 302.8 from across the stadium. And you gotta think, at a stadium, there's a lot of interference going on with the audio signals. You have radio waves, you have TV signals, you have so much going on that you would expect to have more interference, and the Sonys fared extremely well. So really, that is where we have to wrap it up. These both work very, very well. There's subtle differences to why we want to go with the Sennheisers, and one of them is that it has a more powerful preamp so that we can bring down the level inside the camera, which is going to give us a better, cleaner audio signal right off the bat. But like I said, I've been using this Sony pack for over four years without any complaints. They are both very good, and the newer Sonys, I am sure, are much better than the Sonys that I've been using for the last four years. But in the end, we still go with the Sennheisers, but this isn't a by far and away better option. It just seems to have what we need, and like I said, the lower levels that we're able to get straight out of the camera or going into the camera is better for us. So then you guys can decide what is best for you. That is my opinion, that is our comparison, and a little bit of a look at which we think is better. So thank you guys for watching, and that is it. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com. See ya. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to see more videos related to DSLR cameras and video, go ahead, click up here on the screen. And if you are here on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we put up new videos. And we also put videos on Facebook. So don't forget to like the Facebook page to see when we put videos there as well.